If you just arrived to this video, I think you may know how quick and easy it is to combine a procedural texture inside of Blender with a pre-made texture. But the question is, how do we do this process for the normal map and for the displacement? This is the tip I'm gonna tell you in this video right now. Hello, my name is Augusto Cesar and here today I'm gonna teach you a simple trick to mix a procedural texture with your normal maps and your displacement maps. Before that, subscribe, click the notification bell, everything else, and without further ado, let's get started. To combine a procedural texture with the normal map, we're gonna use a mixed RGB node, so shift A, mix RGB, simple as that, and we're gonna put it in front of our normal map. But now, we don't use multiply channels or things like that, we're just gonna go here, take our texture and plug it on the factor, because this is what we're gonna use to mix those two channels. Here is a little bit different, because when we click here to see the result in our mix RGB, you can see that things are getting a little bit messed up. This is because we are combining a black and white texture with something that is not a black and white. A normal map is composed of three values, R, G and B red, green and blue. But our original map is basically black and white, so the zero value for our normal map is not something black or white, it's something with those three values. And this is the key to combine normal maps with your procedural black and white stuff. Because we're gonna need to change this color here for the zero color of the normal map. And the zero color for the normal map is basically a RGB of 0.5.5 one. This is the zero color for, for our normal map. Now, when we press Ctrl Shift click here in the normal map, you can see that some parts of the normal are disappearing and some parts are being preserved. And when we click on the principal shader, we would see that this is going a little bit weird because now everything is inverted. So to invert that, just press Shift A, search, invert, and then we are good to go. Now the parts with the normal map will be the dry parts and the parts without normal map will be the wet part. And the final result will be something like that. We can increase the normal map as much as possible and we will never touch the water part in this puddle. But now let's do the same for the displacement map. In this case here, you can see that I have a plane that is completely subdivided and also my material is using the displacement only setup. This is to make sure that I will use real displacement with cycles. Also, it's good to change the feature set in the render settings to experimental and add a subdivision surface modifier with adaptive subdivision turned on. This will make your scene a little bit lighter. With everything done, press Shift A and add a displacement stuff inside of Blender. Plug it to the output. Here we need to repeat the same process again. So we're gonna take the original displacement from our texture and plug it on the height. And then we're gonna do basically the same process that we did for the normal map, but now with the displacement. By pressing Shift A, adding a mix RGB node and plugging our procedural water puddle on the factor. So to make it work correctly, we need to make sure that this color here will be the center color. So for the normal map is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and 1. Here is 0 0.5 everywhere. So things are fine and good to go. But here you can see that things are inverted as well because we have a lot of displacement in the wet parts and a weird displacement on our dry parts. So same thing here, shift A, invert and put it on the factor. On in front of the factor actually. So now you can see that the places where we have a puddle are basically flat. This will give you the effect that the water is on top of everything, covering the displacement and covering most of the details. Finally, this is the part where I really like this type of combining technique. You can just come here to the scale, reduce it for something reasonable for your scene, and now we can select the height of the puddle just by using this value here. If you move it up, the puddle will be up. If you move it down, the puddle will be lower to the ground. 
giving us a really convincing effect on the floor. So in this case here, I prefer to give it the value of 0.5 in everything to keep it mostly straight and give a small scale to this thing. So 0.02 is enough. And now you have the technique to combine a procedural black and white texture with your normal maps and your displacement. So if you like this video, click like, subscribe, and I think you would like to see this other video that's popping up in your screen right now. See you there.